The independent state of Croatia Croatian, Nezavisna Drazava Hrvatska, NDH, German, Unabongiger Stat Croatian, Italian, Stato Independente di Croatia was a World War II fascist puppet state of Germany and Italy. It was established in parts of occupied Yugoslavia on 10 April 1941, after the invasion by the Axis powers. Its territory consisted of most of modern-day Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, as well as some parts of modern-day Serbia and Slovenia, but also excluded many Croat-populated areas in Dalmatia until late 1943, Istria, and Metamerje regions which today are part of Croatia. During its entire existence, the NDH was governed as a one-party state by the fascist Ustasa organization. The Ustase was led by the Poglavnik, Ante Pavelic. The regime targeted Serbs, Jews and Roma as part of a large-scale campaign of genocide, as well as anti-fascist or dissident Croats and Muslims. Between 1941 to 45, 22 concentration camps existed inside the territory controlled by the independent state of Croatia, two of which Jastrebersko and Sisak housed only children and the largest of which was Jasonovic. The state was officially a monarchy after the signing of the laws of the Crown of Zvonimir on the 15th of May 1941. Appointed by Victor Emmanuel III of Italy, Prince Amini, Duke of Aosta initially refused to assume the crown in opposition to the Italian annexation of the Croat-majority populated region of Dalmatia, annexed as part of the Italian irredentist agenda of creating a mare nostrum RC. He later briefly accepted the throne due to pressure from Victor Emmanuel III and was titled Tomislav II of Croatia, but never moved from Italy to reside in Croatia. From the signing of the Treaties of Rome on the 18th of May 1941 until the Italian capitulation on the 8th of September 1943, the state was a territorial condominium of Germany and Italy. In its judgment in the hostages trial, the Nuremberg Military Tribunal concluded that NDH was not a sovereign state. According to the tribunal, Croatia was at all times here involved an occupied country. In 1942, Germany suggested Italy take military control of all of Croatia out of a desire to redirect German troops from Croatia to the Eastern Front. Italy however rejected the offer as it did not believe that it could handle the unstable situation in the Balkans alone. After the ousting of Mussolini and the Kingdom of Italy's armistice with the Allies, the NDH on 10 September 1943 declared that the treaties of Rome were null and void and annexed the portion of Dalmatia that had been ceded to Italy. The NDH attempted to annex Zara, which had been a recognized territory of Italy since 1919 but long an object of Croatian irredentism, but Germany did not allow it. Geography. <laughs> Geographically, the NDH encompassed most of modern-day Croatia, all of Bosnia and Herzegovina, part of modern-day Serbia, and a small portion of modern-day Slovenia in the municipality of Brizis. It bordered the Third Reich to the northwest, Kingdom of Hungary to the northeast, Serbian administration a joint German-Serb government to the east, Montenegro an Italian protectorate to the southeast and Italy along its coastal area. Establishment of borders The exact borders of the independent state of Croatia were unclear when it was established. Approximately one month after its formation, significant areas of Croat-populated territory were ceded to its Axis allies, the kingdoms of Hungary and Italy. On 13 May 1941, the NDH government signed an agreement with Nazi Germany which demarcated their borders. On 19 May the Rome contracts were signed by diplomats of the NDH in Italy. Large parts of Croatian lands were occupied annexed by Italy, including most of Dalmatia including Split and Shibanik, nearly all the Adriatic islands including Rab, Krk, Vis, Korčula, Mljet, and some smaller areas such as the Boka Katorska Bay, parts of the Croatian littoral and Gorski Kotar areas. On 7 June the NDH government issued a decree that demarcated its eastern border with Serbia. On 27 October the NDH and Italy reached an agreement on the independent state of Croatia's border with Montenegro. 
On 8 September 1943, Italy capitulated and the NDH officially considered the Rome contracts to be void, along with the Treaty of Rapallo of 1920 which had given Italy Istria, Fiume now Rijeka, and Zara Zadar. German Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop approved the NDH acquisition of the Dalmatian territories gained by Italy at the time of the Rome contracts. By now, most such territory was actually controlled by the Yugoslav partisans, since the seeding of those areas had made them strongly anti-NDH more than one-third of the total population of Split is documented to have joined the partisans. By the 11th of September 1943, NDH Foreign Minister Miladin Lorkovic received word from German Consul Siegfried Cash that the NDH should wait before moving on Istria. Germany's central government had already annexed Istria and Fiume Rijeka into the operational zone Adriatic coast a day earlier. Metamerje and southern Baranja were annexed occupied by the Kingdom of Hungary. NDH disputed this and continued to lay claim to both, naming the administrative province centered in Osijek as Great Parish Baranja. This border was never legislated, although Hungary may have considered the Pacta Conventa to be in effect, which delineated the two nations' borders along the Drava River. When compared to the republican borders established in the SFR Yugoslavia after the war, the NDH encompassed the whole of Bosnia and Herzegovina, with its non Croat Serb and Bosniak majority, as well as some 20 square kilometres of Slovenian villages Slovenska Vas near Bragana, Nova Vas near Makris, Jesenice in Dolinsko, Abrezhe and Sedum, and the whole of Sermia, part of which was previously in the Danube Bonavina. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Administrative divisions. The independent state of Croatia had four levels of administrative divisions: great parishes, Zup, districts, Katari, cities, Gradavi, and municipalities, Opsin. At the time of its foundation, the state had 22 great parishes, 142 districts, 31 cities and 1006 municipalities. The highest level of administration were the great parishes, Velike Zup, each of which was headed by a grand zupan. After the capitulation of Italy, NDH were permitted by the Germans to annex parts of the areas of Yugoslavia previously occupied by Italy. To accommodate this, parish boundaries were changed and the new parish of Sidraga Ravni Katari was created. In addition, on 29 October 1943, the Commissariat of Suzak Krk Croatian, Gradanska Suzak Rijeka was created separately by the Germans to act as a buffer zone between the NDH and RSI in the Fiume area to "...perceive the special interests of the local population against the Italians." History Influences on the rise of the Eustace In 1915 a group of political émigrés from Austria-Hungary, predominantly Croats but including some Serbs and a Slovene, formed themselves into a Yugoslav committee, with a view to creating a South Slav state in the aftermath of World War I. They saw this as a way to prevent Dalmatia being ceded to Italy under the Treaty of London 1915. In 1918, the National Council of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs sent a delegation to the Serbian monarch to offer unification of the state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs with the Kingdom of Serbia. The leader of the Croatian Peasant Party, Stjepan Radic, warned on their departure for Belgrade that the council had no democratic legitimacy. But a new state, the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, was duly proclaimed on 1 December 1918, with no heed taken of legal protocols such as the signing of a new Pacta Conventa in recognition of historic Croatian state rights. Croats were at the outset politically disadvantaged with the centralized political structure of the kingdom, which was seen as favoring the Serb majority. The political situation of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes was fractious and violent. In 1927, the Independent Democratic Party, which represented the Serbs of Croatia, turned its back on the centralist policy of King Alexander. On the 20th of June 1928, Stjepan Radic and four other Croat deputies were shot while in the Belgrade Parliament by a member of the Serbian People's Radical Party. Three of the deputies, including Radic, died. The outrage that resulted from the assassination of Stjepan Radic threatened to destabilize the kingdom. In January 1929, King Alexander responded by proclaiming a royal dictatorship, under which all dissenting political activity was banned and renaming the state the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. 
The Eustasa was created in principle in 1929, one consequence of Alexander's 1929 proclamation and the repression and persecution of Croatian nationalists was a rise of support for the Croatian extreme nationalist, Ante Pavelic, who had been a Zagreb deputy in the Yugoslav parliament. He was later implicated in Alexander's assassination in 1934, went into exile in Italy, and gained support for his vision of liberating Croatia from Serb control and racially purifying Croatia. While residing in Italy, Pavelic and other Croatian exiles planned the Eustasa insurgency. Topic: <inaudible> Establishment of NDH. Following the attack of the Axis powers on the Kingdom of Yugoslavia in 1941 and the quick defeat of the Royal Yugoslav Army, Jugoslavenska Vojska, the country was occupied by Axis forces. The Axis powers offered Vladko Masic the opportunity to form a government, since Masic and his party, the Croatian Peasant Party Croatian, Hrvatska Seljaka Stranka, HSS, had the greatest electoral support among Yugoslavia's Croats, but Masic refused that offer. Slavko Kvaternik, deputy leader of the Ustase proclaimed the establishment of the independent state of Croatia on 10 April 1941. Pavelic, who was known by his Ustase title, Poglavnik returned to Zagreb from exile in Italy on the 17th of April and became the absolute leader of the NDH throughout its existence, acceding to the demands of Benito Mussolini and the fascist regime in the Kingdom of Italy. Pavelic reluctantly accepted Amini the Fourth Duke of Aosta as a figurehead king of the NDH under his new royal name, Tomislav II, but never visited the NDH and had no influence over the government, which was dominated by Pavelic. Tomislav II was not interested in being the figurehead king of Croatia. Upon learning he had been named king of Croatia, he told close colleagues that he thought his nomination was a bad joke by his cousin King Victor Emmanuel III, though he accepted the crown out of a sense of duty. From a strategic perspective, the establishment of the NDH was an attempt by Mussolini and Hitler to pacify the Croats, while reducing the use of Axis resources, which were more urgently needed for Operation Barbarossa. Meanwhile, Mussolini used his long-established support for Croatian independence as leverage to coerce Pavelic into signing an agreement on 19 May 1941, under which central Dalmatia and parts of Hrvatsko Primorje and Gorski Kotar were ceded to Italy. Under the same agreement, the NDH was restricted to a minimal navy and Italian forces were granted military control of the entire Croatian coastline. After Pavelic signed the agreement, other Croatian politicians rebuked him. Pavelic publicly defended the decision and thanked Germany and Italy for supporting Croatian independence. After refusing leadership of the NDH, Masic called on all to obey and cooperate with the new government. The Roman Catholic Church was also openly supportive of the government. According to Masic, the new state was greeted with a wave of enthusiasm in Zagreb, often by people blinded and intoxicated by the fact that the Nazi Germany had gift wrapped their occupation under the euphemistic title of independent state of Croatia." But in the villages, Masic wrote, the peasantry believed that, "...their struggle over the past thirty years to become masters of their homes and their country had suffered a tremendous setback." On 16 August 1941, the Ustasha Surveillance Service was established, consisting of four departments, the Ustasha Police, the Ustasha Intelligence Service, Ustasha Defense, and Personnel, for the suppression of activities against the Ustasha, the independent state of Croatia, and the Croatia people. The service was eliminated as a separate agency in January 1943 and functions were transferred to the Ministry of Interior under the Directorate of Public Order dissatisfied with the Pavelic regime in its early months. The Axis powers in September 1941 asked Masic to take over, but Masic again refused. Perceiving Masic as a potential rival, Pavelic subsequently had him arrested and interred in the Jasonovic concentration camp. The Eustace initially did not have an army or administration capable of controlling all the territory of the NDH. The Eustace movement had fewer than 12,000 members when the war started. While the Eustace's own estimates put the number of their sympathizers even in the early phase at around 40,000. To act against Serbs and Jews with genocidal measures, the Eustace introduced widespread measures that Croats themselves were victim to. Jozo Tomasevich in his book, War and Revolution in Yugoslavia, 1941-1945, states, 
Never before in history had Croats been exposed to such legalized administrative, police and judicial brutality and abuse as during the Ustasha regime." Decrees enacted by the regime formed the basis that allowed it to get rid of all unwanted employees in state and local government and in state enterprises. The unwanted being all Jews, Serbs, and Yugoslav-oriented Croats who were all thrown out except for some deemed specifically needed by the government. This would leave a multitude of jobs to be filled by Ustasha's and pro-Ustasha adherents. This would lead to government jobs being filled by people with no professional qualifications. Topic. Italian influence Mussolini and Ante Pavelic had close relations prior to the war. Mussolini and Pavelic both despised the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Italy had been promised, in the Treaty of London 1915, that it would receive Dalmatia from Austria-Hungary at the end of World War I. The peace negotiations in 1919, however, influenced by the 14 points proclaimed by U.S. President Woodrow Wilson 1856 to 1924, called for national self-determination and determined that the Yugoslavs rightfully deserved the territory in question. Italian nationalists were enraged. Italian nationalist Gabriele D'Annunzio raided Fiume which held a mixed population of Croats and Italians and proclaimed it part of the Italian regency of Carnero. D'Annunzio declared himself Duce of Carnero and his blackshirted revolutionaries held control over the town. D'Annunzio was known for engaging in passionate speeches aimed to draw Croatian nationalists to support his actions and to oppose Yugoslavia. Croatian nationalists, such as Pavelic, opposed the border changes that occurred after World War I. Not only was D'Annunzio's symbolism copied by Mussolini but also D'Annunzio's appeal to Croatian support for the dismantling of Yugoslavia, as a foreign policy approach to Yugoslavia by Mussolini. Pavelic had been in negotiations with Italy since 1927 that included advocating a territory for sovereignty swap in which he would tolerate Italy annexing its claimed territory in Dalmatia in exchange for Italy supporting the sovereignty of an independent Croatia. In the 1930s, upon Pavelic and the Eustace being forced into exile by the Yugoslav government, they were offered sanctuary in Italy by Mussolini, who allowed them to use training grounds to prepare for war against Yugoslavia. In exchange for this support, Mussolini demanded that Pavelic agree that Dalmatia would become part of Italy if Italy and the Eustace successfully waged war on Yugoslavia. Although Dalmatia was a largely Croat-populated territory, it had been part of various Italian states, such as the Roman Empire and the Republic of Venice in prior centuries and was part of Italian nationalism's irredentist claims. In exchange for this concession, Mussolini offered Pavelic the right for Croatia to annex all of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which had only a minority Croat population. Pavelic agreed. After the invasion and occupation of Yugoslavia, Italy annexed numerous Adriatic islands and a portion of Dalmatia, which all combined to become the Italian governorship of Dalmatia including territory from the provinces of Split, Zadar, and Kotor. Although Italy had initially larger territorial aims that extended from the Velvet Mountains to the Albanian Alps, Mussolini decided against annexing further territories due to a number of factors, including that Italy held the economically valuable portion of that territory within its possession while the North Northern Adriatic coast had no important railways or roads and because a larger annexation would have included hundreds of thousands of Slavs who were hostile to Italy, within its national borders, Italy intended to keep the NDH within its sphere of influence by forbidding it to build any significant navy. Italy only permitted small patrol boats to be used by NDH forces. This policy forbidding the creation of NDH warships was part of the Italian fascists' policy of Mare Nostrum Latin for RC in which Italy was to dominate the Mediterranean Sea as the Roman Empire had done centuries earlier. Italian armed forces assisted the Eustace government in persecuting Serbs. In 1941, Italian forces captured and interned the Serbian Orthodox Bishop Irenej of Dalmatia. <inaudible> <inaudible> Influence of Nazi Germany At the time of the invasion of Yugoslavia by Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler was uneasy with Mussolini's agenda of creating a puppet Croatian state, and preferred that areas outside of Italian territorial aims become part of Hungary as an autonomous territory. This would appease Nazi Germany's ally Hungary and its nationalist territorial claims. Germany's position on Croatia changed after its invasion of Yugoslavia in 1941. 
The invasion was spearheaded by a strong German invasion force which was largely responsible for the capture of Yugoslavia. Military forces from other Axis powers, including Italy, Hungary, and Bulgaria made few gains during the invasion. The invasion was precipitated by the need for German forces to reach Greece to save Italian forces, which were failing on the battlefield against the Greek armed forces. Upon rescuing Italian forces in Greece and having conquered Yugoslavia and Greece almost single-handedly, Hitler became frustrated with Mussolini and Italy's military incompetence. Germany improved relations with the Eustace and supported the NDH claims to annex the Adriatic coast in order to reduce Italy's planned territorial gains. Nevertheless, Italy annexed a significant central portion of Dalmatia and various Adriatic islands. This was not what had been agreed with Pavelic prior to the invasion. Italy had expected to annex all of Dalmatia as part of its irredentist claims. Hitler sparred with his army commanders over what policy should be undertaken in Croatia regarding the Serbs. German military officials thought that Serbs could be rallied to fight against the partisans. Hitler disagreed with his commanders, but pointed out to Pavelic that the NDH could create a completely Croat state only if it followed a constant policy of persecution of the non-Croat population for at least 50 years. As early as 10 July 1941, Wehrmacht General Edmund Gles von Horstenau reported the following to the German High Command, the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht OKW, Our troops have to be mute witnesses of such events, it does not reflect well on their otherwise high reputation. I am frequently told that German occupation troops would finally have to intervene against Eustace crimes. This may happen eventually. Right now, with the available forces, I could not ask for such action. Ad hoc intervention in individual cases could make the German army look responsible for countless crimes which it could not prevent in the past. The Gestapo report to Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler, dated 17 February 1942, states, increased activity of the bands is chiefly due to atrocities carried out by Eustace units in Croatia against the Orthodox population. The Eustace committed their deeds in a bestial manner not only against males of conscript age, but especially against helpless old people, women and children. The number of the Orthodox that the Croats have massacred and sadistically tortured to death is about 300,000. According to reports by General Gles Horstenau, Hitler was angry with Pavelic, whose policy inflamed the rebellion in Croatia, thwarting any prospect of deploying NDH forces on the Eastern Front. Moreover, Hitler was forced to engage large forces of his own to keep the rebellion in check. For that reason, Hitler summoned Pavelic to his war headquarters in Vinnytsia, Ukraine, on 23 September 1942. Consequently, Pavelic replaced his Minister of the Armed Forces, Slavko Kvaternik, with the less zealous Jury Francetic. Kvaternik was sent into exile in Slovakia, along with his son Eugen, who was blamed for the persecution of the Serbs in Croatia. Before meeting Hitler, to appease the public, Pavelic published an important government announcement, Vazna Obavajest Vladi, in which he threatened those who were spreading the news about non-existent threats of disarmament of the Eustachy units by representatives of one foreign power, about the Croatian army replacement by a foreign army, about the possibility that a foreign power would seize the power in Croatia. General Glez Horstenau reported. The Eustace movement is, due to the mistakes and atrocities they have committed and the corruption, so compromised that the government executive branch the Home Guard and the police shall be separated from the government, even for the price of breaking any possible connection with the government. Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler is quoted characterizing the independent state of Croatia as ridiculous. Quote, colon, quote. Our beloved German settlements will be secured. I hope that the area south of SREM will be liberated by the Bosnian division so that we can at least restore partial order in this ridiculous Croatian state. The Eustace gained German support for plans to eliminate the Serb population in Croatia. One plan involved an exchange in 1941 between Germany and the NDH, in which 20,000 Catholic Slovenes would be deported from German-held Slovenia and sent to the NDH where they would be assimilated as Croats. In exchange, 20,000 Serbs would be deported from the NDH and sent to the German-occupied territory of Serbia. On the meeting with Hitler on 6 June 1941 in Salzburg, Pavelic agreed to receive 175,000 deported Slovenes. 
The agreement provided that the number of Serbs deported from NDH to Serbia could exceed the number of Slovenes received by 30,000. During the talks, Hitler stressed the necessity and desirability of deportations of Slovenes and Serbs, and advised Pavelic that NDH, in order to become stable, should carry on ethnically intolerant policy for the next 50 years. The German occupation forces allowed the expulsion of Serbs to Serbia, but instead of sending the Slovenes to Croatia, they were also deported to Serbia. In total, about 300,000 Serbs had been deported or fled from the NDH to Serbia by the end of World War II. The atrocities committed by the Ustase stunned observers. Brigadier Sir Fitzroy MacLean, chief of the British military mission to the Partisans, commented. Some Ustase collected the eyes of Serbs they had killed, sending them, when they had enough, to the Poglavnik head man for his inspection or proudly displaying them and other human organs in the cafes of Zagreb. The Nazi regime demanded that the Ustase adopt anti Semitic racial policies, persecute Jews, and set up several concentration camps. Pavelic and the Ustase accepted Nazi demands, but their racial policy focused primarily on eliminating the Serb population. When the Ustase needed more recruits to help exterminate the Serbs, and the state broke away from Nazi anti-Semitic policy by promising honorary Aryan citizenship, and thus freedom from persecution, to Jews who were willing to fight for the NDH. As this was the only legal means allowing Jews to escape persecution, a number of Jews joined the NDH's armed forces. This aggravated the German SS, which claimed that the NDH let 5,000 Jews survive via service in the NDH's armed forces. German anti-Semitic objectives for Croatia were further undermined by Italy's reluctance to adhere to a strict anti-Semitic policy, which resulted in Jews in Italian-held parts of Croatia avoiding the same persecution facing Jews in German-held eastern Croatia. After Italy abandoned the war in 1943, German forces occupied western Croatia and the NDH annexed the territory ceded to Italy in 1941. Partisan resistance On the 22nd of June 1941, the Sisak Partisan Detachment was formed in Brezovica Forest near Sisak. This was to be celebrated as the first armed resistance unit formed in occupied Europe during World War II. Croats, Serbs, Bosniaks, and citizens of all nationalities and backgrounds began joining the pan-Yugoslav partisans led by Josip Broz Tito. The partisan movement was soon able to control a large percentage of the NDH and Yugoslavia and before long the cities of occupied Bosnia and Dalmatia in particular were surrounded by these partisan controlled areas, with their garrisons living in a de facto state of siege and constantly trying to maintain control of the rail links. In 1944, the third year of the war in Yugoslavia, Croats formed 61% of the partisan operational units originating from the federal state of Croatia. The federal state of Croatia also had the highest number of detachments and brigades among the federal units, and together with the forces in Bosnia and Herzegovina, partisan resistance in the NDH made up the majority of the movement's military strength. Partisan Marshal Tito, was half Croatian, half Slovene. <laughs> Relations with the Chetniks After the 1941 split between the Partisans and the Chetniks in Serbia, the Chetnik groups in central, eastern, and northwestern Bosnia found themselves caught between the German and Ustase NDH forces on one side and the Partisans on the other. In early 1942 Chetnik Major Jezdemir Danjic approached the Germans in an attempt to arrive at an understanding, but was unsuccessful, and the local Chetnik leaders were forced to look for another solution. The Chetnik groups were in fundamental disagreement with the Ustase on practically all issues, but they found a common enemy in the partisans, and this was the overriding reason for the collaboration which ensued between the Ustase authorities of the independent state of Croatia and Chetnik detachments in Bosnia. The first formal agreement between Bosnian Chetniks and the Ustase was concluded on 28 May 1942, in which Chetnik leaders expressed their loyalty as citizens of the independent state of Croatia both to the state and its Poglavnik Ante Pavelic. During the next three weeks, three additional agreements were signed, covering a large part of the area of Bosnia along with the Chetnik detachments within it. By the provision of these agreements, the Chetniks were to cease hostilities against the Ustase state, and the Ustase would establish regular administration in these areas. 
The main provision, Article 5 of the agreement, states as follows, as long as there is danger from the partisan armed bands, the Chetnik formations will cooperate voluntarily with the Croatian military in fighting and destroying the partisans and in those operations they will be under the overall command of the Croatian armed forces. Chetnik formations may engage in operations against the partisans on their own, but this they will have to report, on time, to the Croatian military commanders. The necessary ammunition and provisions were supplied to the Chetniks by the Eustace military. Chetniks who were wounded in such operations would be cared for in NDH hospitals, while the orphans and widows of Chetniks killed in action would be supported by the Eustace state. Persons specifically recommended by Chetnik commanders would be returned home from the Eustace concentration camps Jasonovic concentration camp. These agreements covered the majority of Chetnik forces in Bosnia east of the German-Italian demarcation line, and lasted throughout most of the war. Since Croatian forces were immediately subordinate to the German military occupation, collaboration with Croatian forces was, in fact, in direct collaboration with the Germans. Topic. End of the war In August 1944, there was an attempt by the NDH Foreign Minister Miladin Lorkovic and Minister of War Andy Vokic to execute a coup d'état against Ante Pavelic. The Lorkovic Vokic coup failed and its conspirators were executed. By early 1945, the NDH army withdrew towards Zagreb with German and Cossack troops. They were overpowered and the advance of Tito's partisan forces, joined by the Soviet Red Army, caused a mass retreat of the Eustace towards Austria and effectively an end to the independent state of Croatia. In May 1945, a large column composed of NDH Home Guard troops, Eustace, Cossacks, some Chetniks and the Slovene Home Guard, as well as numerous civilians, retreated from the partisan forces heading northwest towards Italy and Austria. The German instrument of surrender was signed on 8 May, but the Germans put Pavelic in sole command of NDH forces, and he ordered to continue fighting as the columns tried to reach the British forces to negotiate passage into Allied-occupied Austria. The British army, however, refused them entry and turned them over to the partisan forces, starting the Bleiburg repatriations. Meanwhile, Ante Pavelic had detached from the group and fled to Austria, Italy, Argentina and finally Spain, where he would die in 1959. Several other members of the NDH government were captured in May and June 1945, and sentenced to death or long-term imprisonment in the trial of Mile Budak. The end of the war resulted in the establishment of the Democratic Republic of Yugoslavia, which later became the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, with the Constitution of 1946 officially making the People's Republic of Croatia and the People's Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina two of the six constituent republics of the new state. Topic. Aftermath Although far-right movements in Croatia inspired by the former NDH re-emerged during the Croatian War of Independence, the current constitution of Croatia does not officially recognize the independent state of Croatia as the historical or legitimate predecessor state of the current Croatian Republic. Despite this, upon declaring independence from Yugoslavia in 1991, the Republic of Croatia rehabilitated the Croatian Home Guard, whose veterans have since received generous state pensions, German soldiers who died on Croatian territory were not commemorated until Germany and Croatia reached an agreement on marking their grave sites in 1996. The German War Graves Commission maintains two large cemeteries, in Zagreb and Split. <laughs> <laughs> Government The absolute leader of the NDH was Ante Pavelic, who was known by his Eustace title, Poglavnik, throughout the war, regardless of his official government post. From 1941 to 1943, while the country was a de jure monarchy, Pavelic was its powerful prime minister or president of the government. After the capitulation of Italy, Pavelic became the head of state in the place of Amini, Duke of Aosta also known as Tomislav II and retained the position of prime minister until early 1944, when he appointed Nikola Mandic to replace him. Monarchy. Upon the formation of the NDH, Pavelic conceded to the accession of Amini, the fourth Duke of Aosta, as a figurehead king of Croatia under his new royal name, Tomislav II. Tomislav II was not interested in being the figurehead king of Croatia, never actually visited the country and had no influence over the government. 
In the summer of 1941, Tomislav II declared that he would accept his position as king, only if certain demands were met. That he should be informed about all Italian activities on NDH territory. That his reign should be confirmed by the NDH Croatian State Parliament, and that politics should play no part in the Croatian armed forces. The demands for German and Italian military departures were obviously impossible to be met by the Italian and German governments, and Tomislav II thus avoided taking up his position in Croatia. Amini, initially refused to assume the crown in opposition to the Italian annexation of the Croat majority populated region of Dalmatia, however, he later accepted the throne upon being pressured to do so by Victor Emmanuel III, however, he never moved from Italy to reside in Croatia. Following the dismissal of Mussolini on 25 July 1943, Tomislav II abdicated on 31 July on the orders of King Victor Emmanuel III of Italy. Shortly after the armistice with Italy in September 1943, Ante Pavelic declared that Tomislav II was no longer King of Croatia. Tomislav II formally renounced his title, King of Croatia, Prince of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Voivode of Dalmatia, Tuzla and Nin, Duke of Aosta from 1942, Prince of Cisterna and of Belreguardo, Marquis of Voghera, and Count of Ponderano. In October 1943 after the birth of his son, Amadeo, to whom he gave, amongst his middle names, the name Zvonimir. Parliament The NDH Parliament was established by the legal decree on the Croatian State Parliament on 24 January 1942. The parliamentarians were not elected and meetings were convened just over a dozen times after the initial session in 1942. Its president Vas Marko Dosan. This decree established five categories of individuals who would receive an invitation to be a member of parliament from the Eustace appointed government. 1. Living Croatian representatives from the Croatian Parliament of 1918. 2. Living Croatian representatives elected in the 1938 Yugoslavian elections. 3. Members of the Croatian Party of Rights prior to 1919. 4. Certain officials of the Supreme Eustace headquarters and 5. Two members of the German National Assembly. The responsibility for assembling all eligible members of parliament was given to the head of the Supreme Court, Nikola Vekelic, who found 204 people to be eligible. In accordance with the decree, Vekelic ruled that those who had received the position of senator in 1939, had been part of Dusan Simovic's government, or had been part of the Yugoslav government in exile forfeited their eligibility. 204 people were declared eligible for the parliament, with 141 actually attending parliamentary meetings. Of the 204 eligible parliament members, 93 were members of the Croatian Peasant Party, 56 of whom attended meetings. The parliament was only a deliberatory body and was not empowered to enact legislation. However, during the eighth session of the parliament in February 1942, the Eustace regime was put on the defensive when a joint Croatian Peasant Party Croatian Party of Rights motion, supported by 39 members of parliament, questioned about the whereabouts of the Peasant Party's leader Vladko Masic. The following session, Ante Pavelic responded that Masic was being kept in isolation to prevent him from coming into contact with Yugoslav government officials. In less than a month, Masic was moved from the Jasonovic concentration camp and put on house arrest at his property in Kupenik. Masic was later called upon by foreigners to take a stand and counteract the Pavelic government, but he refused. Masic fled the country in 1945, with the help of Eustace General Anti Moscow. After its February 1942 session, the parliament met only a few more times, and the decree was not renewed in 1943. <inaudible> <inaudible> Court system The NDH retained the court system of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, but restored the court's names to their original forms. The state had 172 local courts 19 district courts judicial tables, an administrative court and an appellate court table in both Zagreb and Sarajevo, as well as a Supreme Court table of seven in Zagreb and a Supreme Court in Sarajevo. The state maintained men's penitentiaries in Lepoglava, Hrvatska Mitrovica, Stara Gradiska and Zenica, and a women's penitentiary in Zagreb. Military. 
The NDH founded the Army of the Independent State of Croatia Serbo-Croatian, Hrvatsko Domobranstvo and Navy of the Independent State of Croatia in April 1941 with the consent of the German Armed Forces Wehrmacht. The task of the armed forces was to defend the state against both foreign and domestic enemies. The army included an air force. The NDH also created the Ustaska Vojnika which was conceived as a party militia, and a gendarmerie. The army was originally limited to 16 infantry battalions and two cavalry squadrons 16,000 men in total. The original 16 battalions were soon enlarged to 15 infantry regiments of two battalions each between May and June 1941, organized into five divisional commands, some 55,000 men. Support units included 35 light tanks supplied by Italy, 10 artillery battalions equipped with captured Royal Yugoslav Army weapons of Czech origin, a cavalry regiment in Zagreb and an independent cavalry battalion at Sarajevo. Two independent motorized infantry battalions were based at Zagreb and Sarajevo respectively. Under the terms of the Treaties of Rome 1941 with Italy, the NDH Navy was restricted to a few coastal and patrol craft, which mostly patrolled inland waterways. When established in 1941, the Air Force of the Independent State of Croatia Serbo-Croatian, Zarekoplovstivio Nezavizni Drazave Hrvatski ZNDH, consisted of captured Royal Yugoslav aircraft seven operational fighters, 20 bombers and about 180 auxiliary and training aircraft as well as paratroop, training and anti-aircraft artillery commands. During the course of World War II in Yugoslavia, it was supplemented with several hundred new or overhauled German, Italian and French fighters and bombers, until receiving the final deliveries of new aircraft from Germany in April 1945. The Croatian Air Force Legion Serbo-Croatian, Hrvatska Zarekoplavna Legija, or HZL, was a military unit of the Air Force of the Independent State of Croatia which fought alongside the Luftwaffe on the Eastern Front from 1941 to 1943 and then back on Croatian soil. Oil. The unit was sent to Germany for training on 15 July 1941 before heading to the Eastern Front. Many of the pilots and crews had previously served in the Royal Yugoslav Air Force during the invasion of Yugoslavia in April 1941. Some of them also had experience in the two main types that they would operate, the Messerschmitt 109 and Dornier Du-17, with two fighter pilots having actually shot down Luftwaffe aircraft. During operations over the Eastern Front, the unit's fighters scored a total of 283 kills while its bombers participated in some 1,500 combat missions. Upon return to Croatia from December 1942, the unit's aircraft proved a strong addition to the strike power of the Axis forces fighting the partisans right up to the end of 1944, because of low morale among army conscripts and their increasing disaffection with the Ustasa regime as the war progressed, the partisans came to regard them as a key element in their supply line. According to William Deakin, who led one of the British missions to the partisan commander in chief Josip Broz Tito, in some areas, partisans would release army soldiers after disarming them, so they could come back into the field with replacement weapons, which would again be seized. Other army soldiers either defected or actively channeled supplies to the partisans particularly after the NDH ceded Dalmatia to Italy. Army troop numbers dwindled from 130,000 in early 1943 to 70,000 by late 1944, at which point the NDH government amalgamated the army with the Eustace Army and was organized into 18 divisions, including artillery and armored units. Despite these difficulties, the army, along with the German-commanded 15th Cossack Corps, was able to assist the Wehrmacht to hold its lines in Sirmia, Slavonia and Bosnia against the combined Soviet, Bulgarian and partisan offensives from late 1944 to shortly before the NDH collapse in May 1945. The Air Force of the Independent State of Croatia provided some level of air support attack, fighter and transport right up until May 1945, encountering and sometimes defeating opposing aircraft from the British Royal Air Force, United States Air Force and the Soviet Air Force. The final deliveries of up-to-date German Messerschmitt 109G and K fighter aircraft were still taking place in April 1945. By the end of March 1945, it was obvious to the Croatian Army Command that, although the front remained intact, they would eventually be defeated by sheer lack of ammunition. For this reason, the decision was made to retreat into Austria, in order to surrender to the British forces advancing north from Italy. The German army was in the process of disintegration and the supply system lay in ruins. 
Topic: Currency. The NDH currency was the independent state of Croatia kuna. The Croatian State Bank was the central bank responsible for issuing currency. Topic: Railways. <inaudible> 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 The NDH formed the Croatian State Railways after the Yugoslav Railways was dissolved, and Serbian State Railways in Serbia was devolved. <laughs> Zones of influence From 1941 to 1943, territory of the independent state of Croatia was divided into German and Italian zones, sometimes described as zones of influence and sometimes as occupation zones. The German zone, which included the northeastern part of NDH, bordering Hungary in the north, German-occupied Serbia in the east, the Italian zone in the south, and Nazi Germany in the northwest. There, the German armed forces Wehrmacht exercised de facto control. The Italian zone, which included the southwestern part of the NDH, bordering the German zone in the northeast, Italian-occupied Montenegro in the east, and Yugoslav territories annexed by Italy in the southwest. After the capitulation of Italy in 1943, the Italian zone of influence was abolished and the German zone of influence was expanded to the whole independent state of Croatia. At the same time, the NDH acquired control of northern Dalmatia split and Topic: Politics Under the independent state of Croatia all parties but the Ustase party were banned. Topic. Foreign relations The NDH was granted full recognition by the Axis powers and by countries under Axis occupation, it was also recognized by Spain. The state maintained diplomatic missions in several countries, all in Europe. Embassies of Nazi Germany, Italy, Tiso's Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Finland, Spain, and Japan, as well as the consulates of Italy, Sweden, Switzerland, Denmark, Portugal, Argentina and Vichy France were located in Zagreb. In 1941, the country was admitted to the Universal Postal Union. On 10 August 1942 an agreement was signed at Brijuni which re-established the Society of Railways Danube Sava Adriatic between the independent state of Croatia, Germany, Hungary and Italy. After the 11 December 1941 declaration of war by Germany against the United States, the independent state of Croatia declared war on the United States and the United Kingdom on 14 December. The Croatian Red Cross was established in 1941, with Kurt Hoon serving as its president. The NDH signed the Geneva Conventions on 20 January 1943, after which the International Committee of the Red Cross named Julius Schmidlin as its representative to the country. Topic. Economy The economic system of NDH was based on the concept of Croatian socialism. The main characteristics of this system, which followed the one of Nazi Germany, were the principles of a planned economy, with high levels of state involvement in economic life. The state reportedly aimed to place the means of production in the hands of the peasants and create a psychic unity among all classes and estates to work for the greater good of the national community, which was seen as more important than individual rights. Croatian socialism contended that work was not a private matter, but the source of all economic worth and the property of the community. The Ustase leaders argued that the ordinary Croatian workers and peasants were neglected and exploited in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Thus, when they came to power, the Ustase promised a social revolution, tackling social injustice and poverty. Their anti-bourgeois pre-war rhetoric continued after the establishment of NDH, as well as the strong rejection of a liberal capitalist system. The International Workers' Day on 1 May was specially marked in honor of labor, social justice and solidarity of workers. The regime soon began the mass construction of homes and settlements for Croatian workers. However, their availability was based on social and ideological conformity. The goal of creating a social utopia and an economically just system went alongside the regime's program of economic expropriation of its national enemies, primarily Jews and Serbs, whose property was nationalized, justified by the regime as a means to help the poorest and equalize class differences. All large companies were placed under state control, and at the end of 1941, all trade unions were merged into one main syndicate called 
Main alliance of syndicates. Croatian, Glavni Savez Staliski i Drugi Postrožbi. At the beginning of 1942, the government introduced compulsory work service for all citizens between the age of 18 and 25. Up to that time, around 7,55 billion Yugoslav dinars were replaced by the NDH kuna at an exchange rate of 1 dinar for 1 kuna. The government kept printing money and its amount in circulation was rapidly increasing, resulting in high inflation rates. By the end of 1943 there were 43, 6 billion kunas in circulation and in August 1944 76, 8 billion. Constant money printing was a way of financing huge government spending, that could not be covered by increased taxation and long-term borrowing. The NDH inherited 42% or 32, 5 million Reichsmarks of the total debt which Yugoslavia owed to Germany. According to official data, the total debt of NDH on clearing accounts at the end of 1944 amounted to 969, 8 million kunas, economic branches of which NDH had most revenue collected through direct and indirect taxes included industry, trade and crafts. Around 20% of states' industrial enterprises accounted for wood industry. However, as the war progressed, industrial production in the territory of NDH was constantly decreasing, while inflation continued growing. In 1942, 80% of NDH exports went to Germany, including Austria, Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, and the Polish general government, and 12% to Italy. Germany covered 70% of imports, while Italy covered 25%. Other trade partners included Hungary, Romania, Finland, Serbia and Switzerland. Exports from NDH mainly consisted of lumber and wood products, agricultural products including tobacco, livestock, ore, and strategically important bauxite. NDH mostly imported machinery, tools and other metal products, textiles and fuel. Topic: <inaudible> Influences of Nazi Germany. In the independent state of Croatia, which Nazi Germany formally treated as a sovereign state, most, if not all, industrial and economic activity was either monopolized, or given a high priority for exploitation, by Germany. Agreements between the two governments in mid-1941 regulated foreign trade and payments and the export of Croatian labor to Germany. Germany already controlled a large number of industrial and mining enterprises in Croatia that were owned in part or in full by German citizens or citizens of German-occupied countries. Many other enterprises in Croatia, especially in the bauxite mining and timber industries, were leased to the Germans for the duration of the war. The Germans also held large interests in Croatian commercial banks, exercised either directly by banks in Berlin and Vienna, or indirectly, by German banks that had large interests in Prague and Budapest banks. From the beginning, the Germans showed great interest in the high quality iron ore mines of Lubija in northwest Bosnia, in the industrial complex steel, coal, and heavy chemicals in the Sarajevo Tuzla Zenica Triangle in northeast Bosnia, and in bauxite. As the war advanced and German military involvement in Croatia expanded, more and more Croatian industry was put to work for the Germans. The bauxite mines in Herzegovina, Dalmatia and western Bosnia, were in the Italian zone of occupation, but their total production was earmarked for German needs for the duration of the war under the German-Italian Agreement of 1941. Other Croatian industrial assets utilized by the Germans included the production of brown coal and lignite, cement major plants in Zagreb and split, oil and salt. Crude oil production, from fields to the east of Zagreb developed by the American Vacuum Oil Company, only started in November 1941 and never reached a high level, averaging 24,000 barrels 3, cubic meters a month in mid-1944. The most important commodities manufactured in Croatia for German use were prefabricated barracks utilizing the large Croatian timber industry, clothing, dry cell batteries, bridge construction parts and ammunition grenades. The Vares iron ore mine supplied the steel mill at Zenica, which had a capacity of 120,000 tons of steel annually. The Zenica mill, in turn, supplied the state arsenal in Sarajevo and the machinery and railroad car factory in Slavonsky Brod, both of which produced various items for the Wehrmacht during the war, including grenades and shell casings. Some Vares iron ore was also exported to Italy, Hungary and Romania. Italian influence The region of the NDH controlled by Italy had few natural resources and little industry. 
There were some important timber stands, several cement plants, an aluminium plant at Lozovac, a carbide and chemical fertilizer plant at Dougie Rat, and a ferromanganese and cast iron plant near Shibanik. Ship building operations in Split, a few brown coal mines supplying fuel to railways, shipping and industry, and rich bauxite fields. Demographics Population According to data calculated by the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs during the creation of the state the population was approximately 6,285,000 of which 3,300,000 were Croats, 1,925,000 were Serbs, 700,000 were Muslims, 150,000 Germans, 65,000 Czechs and Slovaks, 40,000 Jews, and 30,000 Slovenes. Croats comprised slightly over half of the population of the independent state of Croatia. With Muslims treated as Croats, the Croat share of the total population was still less than two-thirds. <laughs> <laughs> Displacement of people A large number of people were displaced due to internal fighting within the former Yugoslav kingdom. The NDH had to accept more than 200,000 Slovenian refugees who were forcefully evicted from their homes as part of the German plan of annexing parts of the Slovenian territories. As part of this deal, the Ustase were to deport 200,000 Serbs from Croatia military regions, however, only 182,000 had been deported when German high commander Bader stopped this mass transport of people because of the uprising of Chetniks and partisans in Serbia. Internal colonization to the region of Slavonia was encouraged during this period from Dalmatia, Lika, Hrvatsko Zagoria, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. The state maintained an office of colonization in Mostar, Osijek, Petrinja, Sarajevo, Shreska Mitrovica, and Zagreb. Racial <inaudible> legislation <inaudible> 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 On the first day of his arrival in Zagreb, Ante Pavelic proclaimed a law that remained in effect during the entire period of the independent state of Croatia. The law, which was enacted on 17 April 1941, declared that all people who offended, or tried to offend, the Croatian nation were guilty of treason a crime punishable by death. One day later, on 18 April, the first Croatian anti Semitic racial law was published. This law did not create panic among the Jewish population, because they believed it was merely a continuation of the anti-Semitic laws of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, which were proclaimed in 1939. However, the situation quickly changed on 30 April, with the publication of the Aryan race laws. A notable part of the racial legislation was the religious conversion laws, the implications of which were not understood by the majority of the population when they were published on 3 May 1941. The implications become clear following the July speech of the Minister of Education, Mile Budak, in which he declared, We will kill one third of all Serbs. We will deport another third, and the rest of them will be forced to convert to Catholicism. Racial laws were enforced until 3 May 1945. The NDH government cooperated with Nazi Germany in the Holocaust and exercised their own version of the genocide against ethnic Serbs living within their borders. State policy regarding Serbs was first declared in the words of Milovan Zanik, the minister of the NDH Legislative Council on 2 May 1941, "...this country can only be a Croatian country, and there is no method we would hesitate to use in order to make it truly Croatian and cleanse it of Serbs, who have for centuries endangered us and who will endanger us again if they are given the opportunity." An estimated 320,000 to 340,000 Serbs, 30,000 Croatian Jews and 30,000 Roma were killed during the NDH, including between 77,000 to 99,000 Serbs, Bosniaks, Croats, Jews and Roma killed in the Jasonovic concentration camp and the same number of Serbs were forced out of the NDH. Although the Eustace's main target for persecution were Serbs, it also participated in the destruction of the Jewish and Roma populations. 
The NDH deviated from Nazi anti-Semitic policy by promising honorary Aryan citizenship to some Jews, if they were willing to enlist and fight for the NDH. The number of Croats killed in the NDH is estimated to be approximately 200,000, either by the Eustace regime, as members of the armed resistance, or as Axis collaborators. According to the 1931 and 1948 census, the Serb population declined in Croatia and increased in Bosnia. Culture Soon after establishment of the NDH, the Yugoslav Academy of Science and Arts in Zagreb was renamed the Croatian Academy of Sciences and Arts. The country had four state theatres, in Zagreb, Osijek, Dubrovnik and Sarajevo. The Croatian State Theatre in Zagreb played host to the Berlin Philharmonic and the Teatro dell'Opera di Roma in the 1941–42 season. Volumes 2–5 of Mate Ujevic's Croatian Encyclopedia were published during this period. The Velbit Publishing House Velbit", named for the Velbit Uprising, published pro-Axis works, including Japanak o Japanu a Japanese on Japan by the Japanese Chargé d'Affaires, Kazuichi Miura. The NDH was represented at the 1942 Venice Biennale, where the works of Joza Kiakovic, Ivan Mestrovic, Antti Matika, Ivo Rezek, Bruno Bulik, Josip Kernobori, Anton Medic, Slavko Kopak, and Slavko Sohaj were presented by Vladimir Kirin. The existing University of Zagreb was renamed the Croatian University, Serbo Croatian, Hrvatsko Svusilist, and was the only university in the NDH. The university established a pharmaceutical faculty in 1942, and a medical faculty in Sarajevo in 1944. It also opened the University Hospital Zagreb, which later became one of the largest hospitals in Croatia. The state had two secular holidays, the anniversary of its establishment was commemorated on 10 April and the assassination of Stjepan Radic was commemorated on 20 June. In addition, the state granted holidays to several religious communities. The Catholic community celebrated New Year's Day, Epiphany, the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord, the Feast of St. Joseph, Easter, the Feast of the Ascension of Jesus, Pentecost, the Feast of Corpus Christi, the Assumption of Mary, the Feast of All Saints, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, and Christmas. The Eastern Orthodox community celebrated New Year's Day, the Epiphany, the Feast of the Annunciation, Easter, the Feast of the Ascension of Jesus, Pentecost, the Assumption of Mary, and Christmas, all according to the Roman calendar. The Evangelical community celebrated New Year's Day, Holy Friday, Easter, the Feast of the Ascension of Jesus, Pentecost, Reformation Day, Christmas Eve, and Christmas. The Muslim community celebrated Islamic New Year, Mevlid, Maulid, Ramadan, and Kirban Bayram Eid al-Adha. The State Film Institute, Hrvatski Slikopis, produced many films, including Straza Nadrini and Lasinski. The Croatian cinema pioneer Oktavian Miletic, was active during this period. In 1943, Zagreb hosted the I International Congress for Narrow Film. On 29 April 1941 the decree on building Croatian workers' family homes was issued which resulted in the development of so-called pavelic neighborhoods in the state's larger northern cities, Karlovac, Osijek, Sisak, Varazdin, and Zagreb. The neighborhoods were largely based on similar workers' housing in Germany. They are characterized by their wide avenues and lots, and for largely being made up of semi-detached homes. Media. The official publication of the government was the Narodni Novin official gazette. Dailies included Zagreb's Hrvatski Narod Croatian Nation, Osijek's Hrvatski List Croatian paper and Sarajevo's Novi List new paper. The state's news agency was called the Croatian News Office Croatia, Hrvatski Dojavni Jurd Croatia, which took on the role formerly performed by the Avala News Agency in Yugoslavia. After the war's end, out of 330 registered journalists in the state, 38 were executed, 131 emigrated, and 100 were banned from working as journalists in the Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia. The state's main radio station was Hrvatski Krugovil, known before the war as Radio Zagreb. The NDH increased the transmitter's power to 10 kilowatts. The radio station was based in Zagreb, but had branches in Banja Luka, Dubrovnik, Osijek, and Sarajevo. It maintained cooperation with the International Broadcasting Union. 
Topic sport The most popular sport in the NDH was football, which had its own league system, with the highest level known as the Zavonimir Group, with eight teams in 1942-43 and 1943-44. Top clubs included Gradanski Zagreb, Concordia Zagreb and Hask. The Croatian Football Federation was accepted into FIFA on 17 July 1941. The NDH national football team played 14 friendly matches against other Axis nations and puppet states between June 1941 and April 1944, winning five. The NDH had other national teams. The Croatian Handball Federation organized a national handball league, and a national team. Its boxing team was led by African American Jimmy Liggett. The Croatian Table Tennis Association organized a national competition as well as a national team which participated in a few international matches. The Croatian Olympic Committee was recognized as a special member of the International Olympic Committee, with Franjo Bukar acting as its representative. The Croatian Skiing Association organized a national championship, held on Zagreb's Schleme Mountain. A national bowling competition was held in 1942 in Zagreb, which was won by Dusan Balatinac. Topic see also Concentration camps in the independent state of Croatia Glina Massacre History of the Jews in Croatia The Holocaust List of Croatian Righteous Among the Nations List of Leaders of Independent State of Croatia Orders, Decorations, and Medals of the Independent State of Croatia The Holocaust in the Independent State of Croatia Timeline of Croatian History Topic Notes Topic References Topic Sources Ambrose, S. The Victors, The Men of World War II, Simon & Schuster, London, 1998. ISBN 978-0-7434-9242-3 Balagic, Milan 1994. The Role of the Vatican in the Breakup of the Yugoslav State, The Mission of the Vatican in the Independent State of Croatia. Ustashi Crimes of Genocide. Belgrade, Struckna Konhiga. Cohen, Philip J., Reisman, David, Serbia's Secret War, Propaganda and the Deceit of History, Texas A&M University Press, 1996 ISBN 0-89096-760-1-3 Deutschland Military Tribunal 1950. Trials of War Criminals Before the Nuremberg Military Tribunals Under Control Council Law No. 10, Nuremberg October 1946 to April 1949 Volume 11 The High Command Case the Hostage Case. Case 12. U.S. v. Von Lieb. Case 7. U.S. v. List, Washington, D.C., United States Government Printing Office. OCLC 247746272. Encyclopædia Britannica, 1943 Book of the Year, page 215, Entry, Croatia. Encyclopædia Britannica, edition 1991 Macropedia, volume 29, page 1111. Fine, Helen, Accounting for Genocide, Victims and Survivors of the Holocaust, The Free Press, New York, edition 1979, pages 102, 103. Hoare, Marco Attila 2006. Genocide and Resistance in Hitler's Bosnia, The Partisans and the Chetniks 1941-1943. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-726380-1. Hori, Ladislaus and Braschet, Martin, Der Krotisch Ustasche Stadt, 1941-1945, Stuttgart, 1964. Kriesmann, Bogdan Pavelic Ismedu Hitlera i Mussolini, Pavelic between Hitler and Mussolini. Zagreb, Globus. OCLC 7833178. Lisko, T. and Kanak, D. Hrvatsko Ratno Zarekoplovstivio u Drugom Svejetskom Ratu The Croatian Air Force in the Second World War, Zagreb, 1998. ISBN 953-97698-0-9. Encyclopedia of the Holocaust, Volume 2, Independent State of Croatia Entry. Masik, Vlado, In the Struggle for Freedom Robert Speller & Sons, New York, 1957. Munoz, A.J., For Croatia and Christ, The Croatian Army in World War II 1941-1945, Axis Europa Books, Bayside N.Y., 1996. ISBN 1-891227-33-5. Neubacher, Hermann, Sonderauftrag Suedost 1940-1945, Bericht eines Fliegens Diplomaten, 2. Dirch Gesehene Auflage, Gatingen 1956. Novak, Victor 2011. 
Magnum Crimen, Half a Century of Clericalism in Croatia, 1. Jagodina, Gambit. Novak, Victor Magnum Crimen, Half a Century of Clericalism in Croatia, 2. Jagodina, Gambit. Pavlovich, Stephen K. Hitler's New Disorder, The Second World War in Yugoslavia. Columbia University Press. ISBN 0-231-70050-4. Rivelli, Marco Aurelio La Genocide Occulte, Atat Independent de Croatia 1941-1945 Hidden Genocide, The Independent State of Croatia 1941-1945 in French. Lausanne, Lodge Dum. Rivelli, Marco Aurelio Larcivescovo del Genocidio, Monsignor Stepanak, Il Vaticano e la Diditura Ustasha in Croatia, 1941-1945 The Archbishop of Genocide, Monsignor Stepanak, The Vatican and the Eustace Dictatorship in Croatia, 1941-1945 in Italian. Milano, Chaos. Rivelli, Marco Aurelio 2002. Dio e con noi. La Chiesa di Pio XII Complice del Nazifascismo. God is with us. The Church of Pius XII accomplice to Nazi fascism in Italian. Milano, Chaos. Russo, Alfio, Revoluzioni in Yugoslavia, Roma 1944. Shaw, L., Trial by Slander, A Background to the Independent State of Croatia, Harp Books, Canberra, 1973. ISBN 0-909432-00-7. Savic, D. and Siglic, B. Croatian Aces of World War II, Osprey Aircraft of the Aces-49, Oxford, 2002. ISBN 1-84176-435-3. Tanner, Marcus. Croatia, A Nation Forged in War. New Haven, Yale University Press, 1997. Thomas, N., Mikulin, K. and Pavelic, D. Axis Forces in Yugoslavia 1941-45 Osprey, London, 1995. ISBN 1-85532-473-3 Tomasevic, Jozo. War and Revolution in Yugoslavia 1941-1945, Occupation and Collaboration, Stanford, Cal, Stanford University Press, 2001. ISBN 0-8047-3615-4 Tomasevich, Jozo, War and Revolution in Yugoslavia, 1941-1945, The Chetniks, Vol. 1, Stanford University Press, 1975 ISBN 978-0-8047-0857-9-4 Worldmark Encyclopedia of the Nations, Europe, edition 1995, page 91, entry, Croatia. Topic. External links BBC News 29 November 2001, Croatian Holocaust still stirs controversy.